Well, uh, I'm just excited to see anyone here on a Sunday morning. Um, so thank you guys so much for showing up. Um, as Chris said, uh, yeah, I've been here a few years. Back in 2012, I was, my first icon was Milwaukee, and I got to present my film Linotype to the film there. So thank you again to Soda for uh, asking me back. So today, I would like to tell you very much about the beautiful island of San Sarif. So we need to go back in time a little bit to learn about the island of San Sarif. We need to go back to April 1st, 1977. I actually have a copy of the newspaper from The Guardian. So The Guardian newspaper, um, if you don't know, a newspaper from London, England. Um, and on this edition, uh, it's a pretty normal newspaper here. We've got some, uh, some pretty typical things that are happening at the time. Uh, first of all, uh, President Carter from the United States is kind of negotiating with the Soviet Union, and the Russians are sticking to a hard line here. Uh, they're, they're being tough. Uh, one of my other favorite things on the front here is pubs charge too much. So if you guys go to a pub uh, in 1977 and you order just a soft drink and mixer, um, the, they cost too much according to the Price Commission report published yesterday. So that's good to know. You need to buy a lager if you go. Um, another thing that I like down here is the go-ahead for safer cigarettes. Not sure quite how that one worked out, um, but it's there. Um, any Europeans in the audience will recognize um, the joke. Even back in 1977, they hated the Eurovision Song Contest. Um, and then it is April in London, so pretty typical weather. Outbreaks of rain with some bright intervals. So what's interesting about this newspaper is it's a fairly normal, but on page 17 here, right next to a color television ad, um, there starts a seven-page article all about the island of San Sarif. And um, it starts on page 17, goes to page seven, or 23, and it's seven pages talking about this beautiful island of San Sarif. It talks about the uh, island itself. Of course, it has a map. It, I mean, it's an island, so they show photos of palm trees. They talk about their leaders, their military, all those sorts of things. So it's a fairly typical and interesting article about the island of San Sarif. I do have to tell you, it's all one big elaborate joke. So it's April 1st, so it's April Fool's Day, which I have to admit, I always felt uh, April Fool's was really stupid. I even, as a kid, I remember thinking, wait, adults like play kind of stupid jokes on each other? I just thought it was stupid. But I also wanted to point out, I, uh, while I was preparing my talk, I asked Siri, what is the origins of April Fool's Day? And I can't tell if it's a, playing a joke on me or if it misunderstood because it says it looks like the answer is about 10.21 US dollars. So I'm not sure. So yes, the island of San Sarif does not exist. This is entirely a joke, but I would, uh, I would like to present to you that it is the most elaborate joke ever done. I think, at least in print. So let's talk about the island of San Sarif. Some fast facts here. Um, you may notice something interesting about this island. It is actually in the shape of a semicolon. Um, and uh, it is actually, if you notice here on this inset, um, the map, it is halfway between Africa and India. And they literally just put a semicolon right there by the hand. I thought that was great. Um, population 1.7 million. The capital is Bodoni. There are tourist centers of Garamond, Villa Pica, Gil Cameo, Cap M, and Umbra. Uh, the currency of San Sarif is the San Sarif Corona, which if you know, Corona is a typeface name. Um, and, it's, and the Corona is broken up into 100 M's, which is pretty funny. And it's a pretty strong currency, actually. Um, at that time in 1977, the Corona is, uh, uh, one Corona equals 4.3 uh, British sterling pounds, which is pretty strong. Um, and then here's a nice little quote from the Guide to the Republic. English is the working language. Kazlon is used on ceremonial occasions. And there is the language Keeflong, indigenous to the Flongs. The Flongs were the native people of the island. So, of course, there are so many amazing printer's puns in this. Um, so let me, I just want to point out some. Uh, first of all, of course, the name uh, San Serif stands for San Serif typeface. Uh, the island shape itself is, the, is a semicolon. What's fun about it, you see up here, is Casa Superior and Casa Inferior, or the upper and lower case islands. Um, and it's just, there's just so many jokes. I, I imagine whoever made this map had so much fun making this map. So starting at the top up here, Pi Island. If you're not familiar, when you pi type, it's a letterpress term. And when you pi type um, is when you drop type all over the place and you kind of lose it. You don't want to pi your type. Um, right down here is Port Elrod. 
Um, now, as we learned last night in the uh, quiz, the Elrod machine was a hot metal uh, strip casting machine that made leads and slugs back when leads were actual lead. Um, all over the island, there are amazing Port Clarendon, Bodoni, Erebar, all these different cities, Perpetua, Umbra, Garamondo, my absolute favorite down here on the southern island, place I, I would spend a lot of time, Gill Sands, <laughs> which I just love. It makes me so happy. Gil Sands, I thought that was really damn clever. Uh, Gil Cameo, Monte Tempo, Monte Allegro. Um, I just imagine like old British printers just, just laughing a lot about this. Um, over here to the left, there's actually a small island off of these islands that, that's owned by Spain called Ovamata, uh, which is actually a joke about over matter. Um, it's type that doesn't fit in a column. InDesign now calls it kind of like type is overset, but it's type that doesn't fit in the column. Um, then right down here, um, is the waj of type. And I didn't know, I didn't understand this term, but I asked, had to ask some uh, UK friends. But a waj, a waj, I guess, I don't even know how to say it, um, is a bulk quantity of something. So the waj of type is a bulk quantity of type. Um, and then there's, there's all these printing terms. Villa Pica, Pearl Island, Cap M, and then at the very south uh, part of the island, 30 point, which I thought was clever. The last thing I will talk about is, so a flong. These are the native people of Sans Serif. But if you don't know, a flong is actually, it's a curved papier mache or paper mache um, play, uh, thing. So I'll explain it. So back in 1977, of course, all newspapers are still, for the most part, done by letterpress on linotypes. And then they put everything together, the, the leads, the slugs, uh, the type, the, everything's together. They, put it together, and they would put what's called a flong down. It, they would press it into the paper. That would then become a mold. They'd curve it, and then they pour hot metal into the flong, and that would make a curved printing plate that would go on the giant rotary presses. So a pretty in-depth joke there with the flongs, but I, I thought it was pretty clever. So there's so many articles in this, and I will tell you, I have this newspaper. I'm going to be out at the back. I please come and look at it because there's so many good articles. But I don't only have time to show one full article. But this article is called Transposed by the Time Tides. And it's a very in-depth scientific look on the fact that the island of San Serif is technically moving. And it's moving because there's very strong neap and spring tides. And uh, I wanted to read this one quote. The islands will accelerate at first gently and then more and more rapidly as they approach Sri Lanka. Simple calculations based on the present movement of 1,400 meters a year and an exponential acceleration rate it suggests that the island group will hit the coast of Sri Lanka at a velocity of 940 kilometers per hour on January 3rd, 2011. So I don't remember anything happening to Sri Lanka on January 3rd, 2011, but it's great. And so what's funny about this is if you didn't understand um, that this was a joke, and if you were just reading your newspaper with your morning tea, you might actually realize, like these, there's all of these articles that talk about different things that are actually you know, reasonably interesting and reasonably understandable. But what makes this entire segment, the seven pages, really, really work are the advertisements. Um, the, there are legitimate advertisements from legitimate companies, but they're in on the joke. So all these companies. So there's this one from Le Cricket Lighters. San Serif is the perfect country with a strong economy and equitable policies. That's because all the workers buy Le Cricket Lighters instead of silly old matches. So there are never any strikes. Isn't it so? So I want to show you a few of the ads. If you've seen anything about Sans Serif before, you would have possibly seen this ad. Um, this is an ad for Kodak. If you've got a photograph of Sans Serif, Kodak would love to see it. The beauty of Sans Serif is legendary. From the serene, stately grandeur of Cap M Opera House to the hustle and bustle of the harbor at Port Clarendon, the islands abound in colorful memories just waiting to be faithfully captured on Kodak film. Kodak are looking for photographs taken by amateur photographies with truly re which truly reflect the evanescent beauty of these fabulous islands. They will be collected together to form an exhibition called The Legendary Beauty of Sans Serif, which will be mounted again this time next year. If you have photographs of Sans Serif, which you might feel suitable for the exhibition, please ring in the number before noon today. So of course it's funny, by noon, half of these people haven't actually even yet uh, read their newspaper, but it's, it's kind of funny. Uh, any Guinness beers drinkers in the audience will know a Guinness is a strong, dark beer with a, a, with a white foam head, but something's a little different in the island of Sans Serif. It was after the freak barley crop of 1956. The local inhabitants of Sans Serif first began to notice a change in their beer. The taste was the same, but the white head turned black and the strong body was white. Experts 
put it down to the novice farm helpers who spent their holiday in San Sarif that year. Knowing little, bit about, little about crops, they sowed the barley seeds upside down. Um, and there's more to this copy, but I just thought that was great. And then you could actually write in to get a free San Sarif Guinness conversion kit. Uh, so to get your San Sarif Guinness, cut out the coupon, putting it upside down in the envelope for easy sorting, and then send it to. So I just thought that was really well clever. I mean, I imagine the copywriters had a lot of fun with these ads. Another ad is for a company called Costain, and I didn't know uh, what, who or what Costain was, but they're actually a huge uh, manufacturing and construction company, and they actually are most well known for building the tunnel under the English Channel, the channel. Um, so, I mean, they're a huge conglomerate, but the Costain group is building a new harbor for His Excellency General Pika. Oh, I forgot to tell you, the leader of the, um, the country is MJ Pika, was his name. Um, and on the east coast of San Sarif, a new type of building technique is using Dido blocks being used to build two sea levels, 0.918 units thick. So 0.918, of course, is uh, 0.918 of an inch is type high. Um, and on the upper and lower cases, the kern of the wall is ranged that its points break up the wave motion of the sea whilst allowing the water to flow through. The confidence of the general is well justified um, as the project will be going to bed three months ahead of schedule. So going to bed is um, at the end of a print run, you would put it to bed is kind of a col colloquial uh, printer's term. So I just thought it was really, really clever. And the last ad I'll show you is uh, from the company Texaco. Win two weeks at, in San Sarif as a guest of James Hunt. Now, I'm not really a big Formula One or motor racing fan, but I do know that James Hunt was a very, very famous and popular uh, racer at this time. And so you and your guests will be flown first class to San Sarif by chartered aircraft and driven to your hotel overlooking the famous Coco Banana Beach, which, of course, is a play on Coco Cabana Beach. And then um, if you look down here in the bottom right, um, there's a bit of a, there's some uh, competition, right? I don't know. Anyway, the, the um, information that you would send in says competition closes March 31st, 1977, and all entries postmarked after that date will be ineligible, which of course was the day before. But again, if you're reading these and you're just flipping through, oh, there's an ad for Kodak, there's an ad for Texaco, you may not notice it. So who did this? Obviously, it took a lot of work, and how did they do this? So Philip Davies, advertising rep, he came up with the idea of the fake island. He said in an interview that apparently the Telegraph, which was a competing newspaper at that time, um, kept always making these ridiculous um, features about these obscure islands that no one had ever heard of. And so he just kind of wanted to make fun of it. And so he decided, let's just make up a fake island. Jeffrey Taylor, he's the foreign editor, editor at uh, the Guardian, so he's the foreign editor. He created most of the content and designed the islands. Stuart St. Clair uh, he was a special reports editor. He actually came up with the idea and the name of San Sarif. Mark Arnold Forster and Tim Radford wrote various articles. And then another clincher, as I said, uh, J. Walter Thompson Ad Agency, a huge, huge, huge agency. They sold advertising space for the supplement. And I think that's actually how this got approved. Because if you think about 1977, the amount of labor to do seven pages in a newspaper, um, it's so much work and so much money. But he, they sold the ads to all these companies, and I thought that was really clever. Um, I, do, I do wish that I could have figured out or found out how they got away with this. I just can't imagine that anyone in any, you know, I can't see any newspaper doing this today, but maybe it was a little more relaxed in the 70s. So what was the public reaction? Um, there were, apparently this was a huge hit, and, and there was tons of phone calls received at the Guardian uh, wanting more information about the island of San Sarif. You know, they had never been there. They, they had never heard of it. They wanted to go. Um, tons of complaints from travel agents. Literally, people called their travel agents saying, book me a flight, or I want to take a, a boat to San Sarif. But it doesn't exist. Um, the Guardian printed, I've been to San Sarif uh, bumper stickers and a t-shirt, and I desperately tried to find an image of this, but I couldn't find it. But apparently, they sold them to readers, and they sold really quite well. And then, of course, some people were in on the joke. Uh, there was a letter to the editor received from the San Sarif Liberation Front, stating how furious they were about the pro-government slant of the Guardian piece, <laughs> which I thought was pretty interesting. So this, has, this whole thing has kind of 
has its own legacy. It kind of keeps going. Um, in 1978 and 1999, The Guardian wrote uh, follow-up articles. They weren't as clever. They weren't as interesting. Um, but they did twice on April Fool's, uh, those dates. Uh, listed as number five of the top, five, uh, top 100 April Fool's Day hoaxes of all time. Um, apparently, a Texas man created a sans serif diplomatic plate for his car which I think is pretty clever. Um, and so this is interesting. This is an image of a certificate of deposit at the Bank of San Sarif. Donald Knuth is a teacher at the computer science department in Stanford University. Apparently, he writes a lot of books about computer science. And if anyone finds an error in one of his books, he sends them a certificate of deposit and keeps an online version, a website of who has found errors and what their deposit amount at the Bank of San Sarif is, which I think is pretty clever. In 2006, Wiki Travel uh, did a very impressive and very extensive April Fool's joke about the island of San Serif, including designing the San Serif national flag, which I thought was pretty damn clever. Um, of course, it's just an asterisk. One thing I do want to show you, because I love show and tell, is this right here. Henry Morris of the Bird and Bull Press in 1988 printed an entire two book volume about the island of San Serif, including printing beautiful 25 corona banknotes, a stock certificate of the, uh, let's see if I can find it here, of the Bird and Bull Press who was established there at the, at, in the island of San Serif, and most ridiculous of all, and I have this and I'm so excited to show it off, he designed and minted an actual silver coin for the island of San Serif. It's 100. So I'm feeling pretty good. Yeah, I'm pretty rich these days with my 100 coronas. But uh, I just think when you take it to that extreme, that's pretty interesting. And I just think that's a really interesting legacy of uh, the island of San Serif. So no Type Con res uh, presentation uh, would be without a callathon. And uh, thankfully, I got to use Guardian Egyptian Headline and Guardian Sands Headline, which is the current typeface the Guardian newspaper makes. It's designed by a commercial type. And when I am in London, I literally read The Guardian purely because I love those typefaces so much. I don't even know what The Guardian is, except I love the type. A few thank yous. I want to say thank you to Ian Funnel. He actually donated this newspaper. And I had, had kind of heard about this newspaper, um, but never knew much about it. He donated this newspaper to the Monotype Archives in Salfords, England. So it is now there. Elman, Elena. I knew I was going to screw her name up. Pa Papa, I don't know. Dan, how do you say it? Papa Sisa. Um, she actually scanned these images in at very high resolution at the Monotype Archive, so I could do this presentation. And then thank you to Christian Schwartz of Commercial Type for allowing me to use uh, their typeface. So I just wanted to say thank you guys so much. <laughs>